I started throwing when I was in my high chair. I could throw my food, my spoon, and dish farther than. Now, actually, I started. I was about ten years old, I believe. It was YMCA camp in uh, Lake Beulah, Wisconsin. All the kids from the Elgin Y who could sell enough cookies or or get sponsored would go to the Y MCA camp at beautiful Lake Beulah. And they had an opportunity day where you go out and shovel and straighten the roads up and we had arts and crafts day and we had one of the days of the two week camp was track and field day. I entered everything from the steeplechase to the uh, the shot put event. We had shot put, high jump, long jump, the 100, the 50. I got second in the steeplechase, second in the 100, first in the 50, first in the high jump, first in the long jump, and I won the shot put, and I hit my camp counselor with the shot. It was a fairly successful day. Okay. After hitting the coach, too. Coaching, since you this is a visual, I want to show you what they did to me coaching. This here is a little clock, about the size of an eight pound shot. This actually is from the Munich Olympic Games. They told me to put the shot on my fingertips, put the ball under my chin, come down and touch the inside of my elbow, skip sideways. I was like, somebody was teaching me to throw a shot putt like they learned how to throw darts. So basically the coaching started out like this thing and then you skip sideways and you throw it and then through the years, not so much from coaching, but I remember then in high school, this is from junior high to high school, and then they started sliding back across the Perry O'Brien, God rest his soul today, and sliding back across and then turning and everybody was always getting the shoulder ahead of the feet. But it was part of the mutation from sideways to back to rotation to the shot put slowly moved back to where it was an actual throw instead of a push. And I guess the coaching that helped the most was being left alone to my own devices. Sometimes if a person is quiet and allows the other person to show some sort of uh, intuitiveness. And so by being left alone, I was left to my own intuitions. And I always had a good arm. Shot putting was difficult, but having, I overcame the way that I was taught and I was left alone enough to where I could learn how to just throw the damn thing. My career highlights, I guess, would be state champion because as good as all the athletes are that I've ever seen, I'm the only one that ever came out of Elgin that was a state champion. That's my hometown, from Elgin High. And there was another shot put it was a state champion that came out of Larkin, I like guess the same city. So it's really difficult, you know, especially with all the different divisions, to be a state champion or to be an All-American in college. Division one, two, or three, or to make your first international team, to be in the top ten on the track and field list, and then to make number one, make the Olympic team, then have a world record, then be able to successfully throw two or three throws in a series that are over 70 feet and eventually have all of your throws over 70 feet then eventually have two or three throws that are world records and then to be able to look back on it and know that in the past 30 years, 32 years only three people have managed to throw a total distance of 10 inches farther than I threw in my prime. Recording. Technical aspects that I would change. First of all, I didn't get to finish my career. I had throws that were 
out over 84, close to 85 feet, several throws over 80. A foul at my third meet in 1976 of 78, 11 and a half and 76, 1, which would still stand. The only thing that I would have changed possibly would not have affiliated with the International Track Association, the ITA professionalism. I would have stayed as an amateur, I would have had a lot more meets, and I would have been able to throw as healthy as I wanted to be and show up at what meets I wanted to be instead of being at a professional circuit and made to compete like a, a circus, uh, three ring circus kind of a thing, no matter what. Uh, I would have had a longer career and it would have taken me, I could have ruined the event forever, but all you guys that are coming behind me should be happy that uh, I had no more, I didn't have an arena to, to function in, I couldn't throw anymore, except in all cover meets and Highland games. The other throwers that I admired were, of course, the ones that beat me. The ones that I learned something. I learned in my progression from the beginning of shot putting to back to holding it behind the ear, which, by the way, isn't really throwing the ball. When you look up, it's just putting it at a higher arc. Okay, the other thing is getting low at the front of the circle, a la Perry O'Brien, the J. I admired Fuhrbach, D. Bernardi, Jesse Stewart, Randy Manson. The guys, well, Manson didn't get that low, but he did throw off the top. To be able to get as low as you possibly can to develop the amount of lift that you need to overcome your speed, I always tried to get more speed or drive and more lift than anyone else on earth. And then I had a larger, longer application of power, a higher parabolum, and a longer distance than anybody that I was competing with contemporarily and or for the next 12 to 15 years until this day, I would still be competitive. Randy Barnes studied me the most and Many people tried to say that the spin was only something that I could do and Barnes said if Oakville can do it, I can do it and he copied me the most and fortunately he even copied some of my flaws which kept him from throwing a lot farther but I know that his practice throws he was out to about 79 feet so he also can look back on the rest of the world earth and know what a decent throw is. Technically his best throw I think was 74-4 his indoor world record because he threw it on a very slippy surface he had to divide the circle instead of jump all the way across he had to even out his application of power and accelerate step by step instead of just jumping and blasting. I would say Randy Barnes most most looked like me and I will accept him as a disciple. In the weight room I pretty much chose to do Olympic lifts and power lifts. My power lifts were mostly back squats and then I did front squats out of the Olympic lifts but I'm uh, I'm the kind of guy that didn't like to do deadlifts, besides I was already doing snatch pulls and high pulls from uh, the Olympic lifts, doing those partials. My pet lift for shot putting was the push press or the jerk or the, or the Olympic lift that they eliminated. That was the bread and butter lift. I could do 450 pounds for a triple and uh, I did it three times a week. I was probably up to 500 pounds for a jerk. That was just a push press. But that's the way you get a good solid backward C and you get that plyometric at the front of the circle or the lift you need to overcome the drive. The best discus lift is the snatch pull or the high pull with the secondary center of gravity through the shoulders. This part, which is 
And then I remember real high bench presses and push presses. Everything has to be over the head. The Working my secondary pull and my overhead were the secret to my success. Everybody does stuff below the, the, the meridian of the, the neck. And the strongest of the strong do the same amount of weight over that meridian. I did a lot of drills. The Highland Games were the best for rotational throwing because you got out and you had to th rotate and throw and do your exercise with uh, on grass, which is very slippery. So if you overcompensated or used the, 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 the grip of a concrete like most throwers did in international events, you didn't have, it wasn't as smooth as you needed to be doing the same exercise on grass where you had to incorporate the balance and finish and there was no way to like dig in and use that traction. You had to throw without traction. It was like trying to do a stunt on ice skates, which is pretty difficult for most big strong people, but it did help me to evolve. The other thing I would say is lots of sprints, lots of drills, building rotational muscles from doing sets of 10 instead of just one repetition, 10 repetitions with a 56 pound weight and making the 10th rotation better than the first one. When you're dog tired, can't see, and snot's running into your ear, that last one's better than the first one. My best standing throw was I, well, here's, I, I fouled on my standing throws because they don't care about those. The day I threw 75 feet, I threw 67 and a half feet standing. It was really good. If I would have had to stay in a circle, it would have probably have been 65 feet. So that's 10 feet through the circle that day. On my best day, which was like 10 years later in 84, I threw 59 feet and stayed in and then through almost 73 feet coming through the circle and staying in. That's almost 14 feet. That's pretty damn girl. My best standing throw with a foul at 66 feet and the same day the best longest warm up I had with a foul was 85 feet. That's 19 feet through the circle. And that's a very good day. On or off the track? <laughs> let's leave it on the track. Well, let's see. One of the worst memories I had was being in Munich. And after having everybody trying to throw me off the team, they finally decided to let me compete. And they gave me this white jacket and this cool white hat and a red tie and a blue shirt. I was dressed up like Clarabelle. That's a clown, by the way. And then we all are out there and... They release like 10,000 pigeons, very well-fed pigeons who hadn't had any exercise, that proceeded to dump all over our parade. Not to mention modern terrorism, not to mention uh, Rhodesia, not to mention South Africa. You think it was tough competing against all this stuff? The whole world was topsy-turvy, but the Olympics went on. My legacy to our sport is stay loose, keep it high, uh, how, how a shot putter is supposed to behave. <laughs> Have fun, be a good champion. That's very important and it's a manly event and it's fun. You're supposed to have people get to be the champion of something they don't have any fun anymore. They're too caught up with their own press or they, they start to get, you know, they start to think they're tough or they're they're idiots. Just have fun, be humble, remember where you come from. Go home for Christmas and let your family take after you. Let them get to you. They'll reduce your ego. <laughs>